Welcome to my KTM video playlist. Today we are going to discuss about example on clutch. Especially this is the single plate clutch and the problem is related to the uniform wear. So let's see first of all the description of the given problem. A single plate clutch. So consider this figure and write down first of all the given data with symbolic notation. So here it is written a single plate clutch with both sides effective. So you can say n is equal to 2 because of here it is written both sides are effective. If one side is effective then you can write over here n is equal to 1. Has outer and inner diameters 300 mm and 200 mm. So you can say outer diameter that means D1 and inner diameter that is D2. So outer diameter D1 300 and inner diameter D2 200 mm. The maximum intensity of the pressure that means P is equal to 0.1 Newton per mm square. If the coefficient of friction is 0.3 that means mu. Determine the power transmitted that means P is equal to question mark at a speed of 2500 rpm that means N. So this is the given data and we are going to find the power P. Now here look at this important word. Here it is written the maximum intensity of the pressure. So from that you can understand you have to assume the uniform wear condition. So if the maximum intensity of the pressure is given to you then obviously you have to assume the uniform wear theory. And again you know that in case of the uniform wear theory always your intensity of the pressure is maximum at the inner radius always. So here I am going to assume the uniform wear theory and intensity of pressure is maximum at R2 always. So you can say P into R2 is equal to constant according to the uniform wear theory. So you have to remember that uniform wear theory that means P into R2 is equal to constant where P is the intensity of the pressure R2 is the inner radius. So now you can put the value P is equal to 0.1 R2 that is 100 is equal to C as it is. So you can find the C from this equation that is 10 Newton per mm. Now we are going to find the power transmitted and you know that power transmitted by the clutch P is equal to T into omega where T is the torque and omega is the angular velocity. So you have to remember this equation power transmitted by the clutch that is always T into omega. Now here this is our objective to find the P and if you want to find the P then you should know the value of T as well as omega. But here you don't know the T as well as you don't know the omega. So again how you can find the T? So there is a formula T is equal to N into mu into W into Rm where you know that T is the torque and is the number of sides effective, mu is the coefficient of friction, W is the load and Rm is the mean radius. Now again the question is about the omega and you know that omega that is angular velocity and that is equal to 2 pi n upon 60. Here rpm is given to you so obviously you can find the omega but here you have the n, mu, but you don't have w and rm. Here w is the load and rm is the mean radius. So how you can find the w? So again there is a formula w is equal to 2 pi c in bracket r1 minus r2. Now look at this equation. You have the value of c, you have the value of r1 and r2 both. So you can find w. Now the question is about the rm. So again there is a formula Rm that means mean radius and that is equal to R1 plus R2 by 2. Now keep in mind this both equation are actually for the uniform wear theory only. So if uniform wear theory then you can apply this two equation. So this is actually the planning to solve the problem. So very simple here we have to find the power and for the power this one is the formula. 
Now here you have to find the T. In this equation W and Rm that is not given to you. So you can apply these two equations. Here omega is the angular velocity and you know that this one is the formula. So this is actually the planning to solve the problem. Now let's see one by one. So first you have to find the torque. And so that I have written this equation. But here for the Rm this is the equation R1 plus R2 by 2. And that is for the uniform here. So again there are the two cases. For uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory. So already we have discussed this equation is for the uniform wear theory. But if it is a uniform pressure theory then you can find the Rm by using this equation. So keep in mind both the equations. If it is uniform wear theory then you can find the Rm from this equation. If it is a uniform pressure theory then you can find Rm by using this equation. Now here we know that this is the uniform wear theory and so that we have to apply this equation first so that we can find W. So I put the value C is equal to 10 and R1 and R2 is given to you over here. So simplify it so that you will get the W that is the load or you can say axial thrust. And you know that this is the load, so obviously the unit is Newton. Now I can find the Rm. So very simple Rm that means the mean radius of the friction surfaces for uniform wear theory. Again you can put the value of R1 and R2 from this. Now simplify it. So you will get Rm. Again this is the mean radius so the unit is mm. So now you have the W, you have the Rm. Now find the angular velocity. We have the N, so put it over here and simplify it so that you will get the angular velocity. And you know that angular velocity is always in radian per second. Now we have the W and Rm both, so you can find this torque. So now I am going to find the torque transmitted. So put the value over here. So n is equal to 2, then mu is equal to 0.3, w is equal to 3142, and rm is equal to 125. Simplify it so that you will get the torque in Newton into mm. Here keep in mind mean radius that is in mm so that unit of the torque is in Newton into mm. Now it is very simple. Now you have the torque and you have the angular velocity so that you can find the power by using this equation. But for this equation always T is in Newton into meter so that I have converted the torque from Newton into mm to Newton into meter. Now you can use this equation. So put it over here torque in Newton into meter and omega that is the angular velocity that is equal to 261.8. So simplify it so that you will get the power in watt. So this is your answer determine the power transmitted by a clutch. So make a box. So it is really very simple problem. If you have any doubt then you can write in the comment box. I will be back. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate it.